Hey, isn't it time to step up to Axelson? <laughs> this is actually what I have to do to flop this uh, 125-pound four-jaw chuck over to work on the back of it. I'm uh, dinking around with it. I'm making it run true. But uh, there's not many lengths you can really uh, walk around on. This one you can. Hey, I'll get the camera over close to show you what I'm doing. Hello. Hey, I was really dreading doing this, but uh, it turned out to be not too bad. It um, The chuck was running out just uh, over three thousandths on the face here, and I marked the high spot. And uh, all I did was I took a, a real fine... This has been a very handy file. I've been kicking around for a long time. It's a very fine uh, knife edge file. So I took and I, I just started, you know, uh, more or less draw finally like this on the, on the higher side and not very much. And then took uh, these... Uh, precision ground stones that uh, fill sent. And uh, these things work real good for, uh, for this. And just started uh, working this a little bit and notice that there's uh, kind of a raised spot here. And, and uh, I can tell by the machine marks how much I'm removing, which is hardly any. I'm going to go around and make sure that the, the whole thing is uh, deburred. But just kind of lean on it. <laughs> I know. The high half. And all of a sudden I put this thing on and uh, it's running... Uh, one and a half thousand. So I'm, not, you know, it, it'll probably run uh, just petting it a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe it'll run closer to one, but one and a half is fine. And uh, there's a magic number of two thousandths on rotating things, and uh, you see it in industry. And like multiple piece crankshafts in snowmobiles and. Uh, and have uh, multiple piece uh, crankshafts and motorcycles. The specs, it seems like no matter what the manufacturer is, is uh, maximum run out, uh, two thousandths of an inch. And uh, in the Romicron boring head manual, it talks about uh, run out of boring heads uh, uh, of being a maximum of uh, two thousandths of an inch. And I noticed that on the Monarch 10 E, <clears throat> more so at uh, speeds from 3,000 to 4,000, that uh, any run out on, on just about anything in the machine uh, over two thousandths of an inch will cause noticeable vibration. So, I don't know. If you can get things uh, just generally uh, um, true within two thousandths of an inch, I think you're a lot better off than if it's out ten thousandths of an inch. So you just rub these stones together and work this surface. Maybe I'll pull a camera around you can kind of see what that looks like. These are very good uh, items. They work very good. Otherwise, I'd be using a smaller uh, um, hard Arkansas stone. And it, uh, it works, but it's not as quick and, uh, and, and, and maybe not as good. <laughs> okay, let me take this loose here and kind of get a 
a look at this maybe and get the uh, light on it where you can see. You kind of get, uh, let me pick one of these stones out again. You kind of get spots that show up. There's kind of one right there and they kind of mirror shine. But it didn't take much to knock uh, knock that run out. Uh -oh, make that a lot better. Okay. So I'm going to get that back on and I want to do some other uh, checks with this. And uh, I'll be back for that. Okay. Now this is what I was looking for. I got this um, piece of tubing here that is thick wall two and a half inches and one foot sticking out there and I've got it running within a half thousandths here and I got it running within a thousandths out here and uh, that's uh, before it's having a little bit more of a difficult time doing that I got the face of the chuck just using um, the stones and a file on that back mount a little bit, I got it to run a thousandths and a half out, making it uh, possible to get the, this running true out at the end. Now, you don't want to use a steady rest or your tail center to pull something like this true because the part will be uh, cut under stress and it'll be out around if you're looking for the best tolerances. Um, so you want you want everything stress free, and that's particularly important on that uh, little Monarch 10 E that you're not uh, you don't have the workpiece under any stress at all, and everything's free to rotate. So there, <laughs> I think it was worth the effort uh, doing that. Uh, it, it just overall made this chuck just a, just a lot better. Now, a lot of lathes don't have taper attachments. And uh, when I was shopping for a lathe, I, I needed a taper attachment because I'm going to make a bunch of tooling for that uh, radial drill press for line. It, it, GoPro cameras are uh, really funny. This thing's working a lot better, but it, <laughs> they, this one, this model, Model 9 likes to shut off, but it's not that big of a deal. And I'd like to thank uh, Ward again for the batteries because he's making the video possible in uh, better clarity. The uh, little Canon Elf I was using just about, uh, I just about killed it when I first started making videos. I don't know, I might have made 50 videos with it and it kind of started malfunctioning. <laughs> so let's say uh, you want to uh, align something by the bore. Well, one of the things you can do, and I'm going to make some whatever taper this is, a journo taper um, adapter so I can uh, machine a spud or just a protrusion. You can slide the bore of something in there. Uh, and it's mounted in, in the spindle uh, taper. Then you can wrap a piece of lead around this and, and bring the jaws to uh, drive it. And uh, that way you can align something by the bore. Then you put a piece of steel out here that's uh, tapered to fit like a... Uh, a honed or even rifled bore, you can put a tapered uh, piece in here, have it protrude out, make it in one piece on the, this machine or the Monarch 10 double is great for that kind of stuff. Then you can align a piece sticking out that's fitting into the bore out here and do the same thing. So I thought uh, I, I would add that. And uh, having everything run true is just... Uh, makes things so much better and yeah. especially on <laughs> you, know, you know these old machines can uh, use as much help as possible and there's some other really kind of interesting things about these old machines I'll, I'll point out as we go like carriage travel 
is uh, a, a bit limited on, on these heavy pattern but short bed uh, machines and you have to get a little bit innovative to uh, fully reach everything. Like uh, this machine is uh, an old measurement however they did it. it's uh, 14 by 30 but it, the actual swing is 16 and 3 quarters and uh, with uh, being able to um, they say it's uh, you can overhang the tailstock four inches, and that gives it 36 inches with this chuck. So there, you you can squeeze uh, you can squeeze stuff into a, a machine like this. Okay. Well, I'm really satisfied with this. All the chucks are working and everything, and uh, I've got uh, um, I've got a bunch of tools to sharpen. And a couple things to cut. I got some castings I want to try out. So uh, I'll be turning the camera on <laughs> just to uh, uh, keep things going and keep moving. At least I'm not focusing so much on uh, repairing uh, this lathe, which uh, it, it had a lot of little things wrong with it. And uh, one of the one of the problems with it was uh, the contamination from the coolant. This thing just smelled terrible. I had to scrape every bit of paint um, off of it because um, uh, some of those old cutting fluids um, um, they don't really evaporate and they creep under paint. And if you try to paint over it, the paint just lifts off. So I don't know. I will be back pretty soon, and I hope you guys have uh, have a good day. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do a little bit later, but if uh, if I got something uh, going, I'll uh, turn on the camera. Okay, thanks for tuning in.